Welcome or commiserations to you for clicking on this video and welcome to anybody who's new to the channel or new to this particular video series. So what I'm doing in this series, wisely or not, is sharing thy games, my results of my over the board season as an English chess player in the English leagues, as an average chess player in the English leagues and uh, just a bit of context if you're not familiar, I'm somebody who you know went from 0 to 1800 and then took a big break from chess during the the COVID years to work on my books and I had like 11 games last year I went back to chess a little bit last year so three years off and then I went back and played 11 other board games last year that's nothing and then I've had a six month break and then I've gone back this season you know, virtually not training any chess so I wasn't really expecting anything and the first two games you can watch those if you so want uh, were awful games awful games of chess but will things turn around in this third game so I'm going to share that with you now so let's have a look. I was the white pieces. Once again, I got someone who is in the 1800 bracket. So they're slightly stronger than me. And they're certainly much more fresh than I am. But anyway, I was white in this game yesterday. And I kicked off having jumped already the D4 system openings that I was going to play uh, all season. Because... I just felt I had to go back to the E4 system, uh, well not system, the setups, you know, and just go with what I knew. So my, the opponent went into a Scandinavian and we played into this line and then he played Queen D6. So it's at this point that I remember I played this guy about six months previously uh, and I, I lost and I played in this game against Scandinavian. So I thought, ah, I played in this line, uh, I know the sort of things he's going to do. Uh, if he goes down those lines again. So what I had prepared very briefly for the Scandinavian is in these lines, I was going to go B4, right? And I was going to have a get, bit of gambit fun and get the bishop out to C4 and target this square. And there are lots of sacrifice ideas, you know, we're not after normal development in D4. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, my opponent played the, uh, what seems to be a very popular Queen D6 line. So I thought, okay, let's just play normal move. So I played D4, Knight F6, Knight F3, A6. And then here, I actually decided to free Enketo. I thought, what am I going to do? This bishop usually pins quite a lot, and it's annoying. And then you have to decide whether you're going to sort of unpin and create this sort of position, and maybe go in like this. And I... <laughs> Castle King side. I don't really like this setup. It feels a bit loose around the king. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to free and Keto uh, uh, do this. And it turns out that the computer really likes this idea. Uh, so yeah, okay. Found a fairly good idea and good setup. And I thought with this bishop along this diagonal that that bishop looks pretty good potentially. So I was happy with this sort of you know, spur of the moment, you're just making it up as you go along, which is what I do with the openings most of, most of the time. Uh, and then I went into castles, and I went into this position, and I thought, okay. And then he castled queenside, and I went, ah, that's the game. He castled queenside, and he bore pressure against the deep pawn last time. And that's what he did. Uh, now I remember. And what I tried to do in that game is I ended up playing moves, trying to trap the queen you know, on the queen side somehow with certain moves and it didn't quite work out. And I thought I was there and I thought his king was exposed. And I thought, nah, it didn't work out this time, at uh, that time, but let's hopefully this something works out this time. Uh, so what I did in this position, I decided to go bishop f4 and hit the queen immediately. And uh, I was okay with this position. In this sort of setup, I thought, come on, these two bishops, like they're raining down against the king. Right, I've got the knights out. Uh, you know, this pawn obviously could be a gambit pawn in this position, but I can sidestep the queen uh, and I can bring the rooks in and I can have the rooks on the open board. Whereas this bishop's doing no, this rook's doing nothing. And uh, I've got to be honest, I was happy with my position at this point, thinking, yeah, I'm going for it. I'm going for an attack on the king. Do something with this knight maybe throw these pawns forward uh, at some point and I'm happy with this opening uh, setup I've got to be honest and I decided actually to sacrifice this pawn and play you know the queen to e1 uh, with the idea of if knight takes then I you know, obviously I could take that with this queen takes and then I have things like maybe not immediately because of this bishop but I could kick the bishop back and then bring the rooks to, to this file and the queen moves away I take this piece out bringing the king out and I thought this sort of set up sacrificing the pawn anyway for an attack bringing the rooks to uh, the file the problem with this 
does look a bit weird. You know, I've got to admit when I played this move, it looks a bit weird, a little bit experimental. And the move I had in mind was actually this move was my original idea. It's more sensible getting out of the pin and you're preparing things like this. So the Queen E1 idea was a little bit, mm, let's try that. So I'm going to go back to this idea afterwards, but let's just happen. Let's just look what happened in the game. So Queen E1, and I was expecting this sort of take, but what I had actually was something I did not consider just Bishop chopping off the knight. And, you know, this is a weakness I've found in the games that I've played. I'm just not considering all options. I'm looking at certain lines and not considering all options. So after Bishop takes knight, Bishop takes bishop, forced real late, knight takes, I still have my sack idea. And obviously this knight is on this folk as well and on this. So it, it feels see, necessary to defend this pawn. But what I did try is this move, like, you know, queen e3, looking for the cheapo idea and coming to this square and delivering checkmate. Whoops, on the back rank. But my opponent, you know, he's a good player. He's 1800, solid 1800 player, very experienced. There's an hour on the clock each at this moment. Having you know, the game is 75 minutes with zero increment, which is ludicrous in this day and age, but you know, that's a different story. He wasn't going to fall for this trap, and he, you know, quite rightly just took the bishop. So I had to take back with this position. But I'm quite happy. I'm still happy with this with this position. You know, it's probably not as good with the, the light square bishop, obviously, now taken from the board. But this dark square bishop here, and you know, I've still got these ideas. I can still bring these rooks. I'm quite happy to sight the pawn in this position. I thought I'd still got an attack on the Black King uh, potentially coming because at the same time, you know, this still takes a while to get out and this is not doing anything yet. Okay, this isn't, but it's very easy to develop. So uh, in this position, my opponent played a move and I didn't see this move sort of come in. I just sort of, sort of I thought he had to play something like this, but he didn't play this move at all. Instead, he played this you know queen h3 and then obviously what he wants to do is bring the knight to g4 and just threaten uh, a certain checkmate on this square so in this position i've got to admit i'm thinking i'm quite happy all i need is a bit of time i need time to bring the queen to e3 so the queen can come here and then you know the king's got to run uh, but maybe and you know, obviously need to deal with this threat so i'm thinking with this threat there's going to be a checkmate here so what i'm going to do is clear this rook so this is my idea uh, so if the knight comes to g4, the takes with check, the king can sort of run a little bit. And, uh, you know, after this move, we probably trade. And then queen takes, well, after this move. Uh, let's start again. <laughs> so king, uh, rook to uh, d1, and then either we get a trade immediately. Right, and then this comes in here. Right, and then I can bring the queen across. So something like this and we take and I thought the king could then sort of escape like to e2 or something like that and I would have an attack coming to this square or penetrating down the e-file so I played this move and my opponent took and took and then we went into the line that I thought and in this position I thought actually uh, what I could do is just the same idea but if I just bring this bishop to e3 Right, and then this bishop then's guarding this and also cutting off this square. Right, so that's that's quite a nice setup. And all I've got to do is bring the queen to this square. Right, and then it's just it's a back rank checkmate. There's no way black's just got not time not got time to stop that. So that was the plan. And then after Queen T Bishop two, you know, e three and Queen takes check. King F one. My opponent played a, a cheeky little move that I just again didn't think because I just can't think these days clearly he played this move queen h5 and it's like okay so he took the pawn and then retreated the queen uh, to defend all these sort of mating attacks so there's no longer this move annoying but still I thought we'll just sidestep you know let's get the queen to this square then let's just sidestep and then we have multiple threats that's not going to be beaten and this bishop still guards this square so if there is an attack you know there's no immediate mate on uh, f2 so i played uh ah of course yes in this position yeah and we're also threatening this so you know i couldn't just do that yeah i had to take a move away and i'm always a move sure it seems because i have to do this uh, i don't want to step onto this square with the queen you know staring down here so i have to be careful of this threat which just wins the queen uh, embarrassingly so i moved the king to e1 for that reason and uh, we go back knight f6 
so I'm thinking, you know, a double cover in this square. It's no problem. I'll just play queen f4 with the idea of coming to d4. Game over. First victory. Only my opponent played... No e5. Okay, so e5. Let's just move the queen here and uh, the knight's sort of pinned to f6, protecting this square. And we'll do that. So we'll whack the queen to a4. So we've now played about an hour and a half. So we've got half an hour on the clock each. And, you know, I have been ill over the weekend, I COVID over the weekend. So my brain uh, probably couldn't cope with much more than this. So I thought, you know, we're going in for this sort of attack. And either, you know, he's going to win because he's two pawns up and he's just going to defend everything. Or in the next few moves, I'm just going to win uh, the game by, by checkmate or forced a forced sequence that's going to result in a loss of material. So in this position, I thought for a while and uh, my idea was to try and deflect this knight from f6. Right, and how can I do that? Well, there's this, there's this. But what I wanted to do, I do want to play knight coming to d5 because I wanted the queen to sort of penetrate in this square. So I thought if I play knight e4, and this is my thinking, uh, you know, we've got an idea of bishop coming in, which I didn't really want. Uh, it, well, it's, it's black, black to black. So after this, in this sequence, rook coming across, which I didn't really want. But after this move, if knight takes, then I was thinking of, you know, there's two choices there. That black's going to play. This is probably the best move. After after ninety four, this is probably the best move. Just you know nullifying the threats along that file. But but there's also the option of of takes by the by the knight as well on e four. So after that, I could take uh, the bishop after check, and then I'm just throwing checkmate on the back rank, and this is still guarding this square. And there are a few checks in this position, but I was sort of calculating lines like this. And then queen comes back with check. And the knight's on this square, if we take, I don't remember, but uh, maybe I can play here and things like that. So I'm thinking, I'm looking down these lines, you know, visualizing so 89 moves. I'm thinking there is a mating attack and I've got to go for mate, right? So I've just got to play the most aggressive move, like I mean, this move and this move and this move's the plan, but that takes three moves, by which time black's just traded off the rooks and you know, brought in more defenders, so that's just not going to work. So I played knight e4, thinking, come on, uh, this looks the most, you know, probably potential move, but I'm hoping for knight takes e4, and immediately my opponent just played this, right, and I just went, what an absolute moron, and again, I'm just blundering to simple tactics, overlooking threats, you know, it's no good analysing nine moves deep if you're overlooking this move. And after this move, king e2 forced, queen takes, game over, third loss in a row. Right, so it's this point, you know, I am, got to be honest, I'm absolutely gutted, I'm very, very annoyed with myself, I just feel like crap. <laughs> but uh, I just played a couple of random moves and then just resigned at that position. Uh, I, I said, I'm having enough, straight to the bar, straight home, not very happy when I go home. So, you know, this is very frustrating, but, 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 you just got to get used to getting battered like as an adult as i've said in previous videos you know this is just normal this is natural especially after a layoff and it's like i felt myself i felt to myself this morning i said to myself it's like it's like when you're laying on the floor and like people are kicking you in the face like just one more kick in the face doesn't really matter if you're being previously a few times so that's where i am at the moment but 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 i'm also playing again tomorrow and i'm also playing at the same place as uh I played against with this team. It's the same team, except it's away. So there's a chance I get this guy again tomorrow, right? I mean, 50-50, I don't know. Don't know what the board set up or anything like that, but there's a chance. And it's a toss of a coin if it's white or black. So it could be, I'm thinking 20, 25% chance I get this same guy again tomorrow, which just doesn't happen in the leagues. So what I've done earlier and, and a little bit yesterday, but... I was I was too uh, like pissed off yesterday to do any, any work on it. Mostly today, I've looked at what the hell I can do out this opening and try and improve, you know, the opening. So I'm looking at the moves and I'm happy and I know that Black will play this setup because he's played it twice before, and I'm happy with this position, but I'm not happy with this move. So the move that I'm going to play, if you know, get into this position tomorrow, please do is Queen D3, and you know it's. Is it computer best move? It is slightly queen d3 and it looks more natural. And what I'm hoping for, although he'll probably just play this move and just carry on with this setup, uh, I'm hoping that knight takes, which is, is that a potential move? 
uh, Lee Chess. Let's look at the Lee Chess amateur database. It says that Bishop takes f3 is the top choice, followed by Knight takes d4, 28, 25%, e6, 15%. So I have got options of both these moves, but if Knight takes, this is what I'm going to do. Right, Knight takes 95, hitting the Queen and hitting this uh, forking potential square on f7 so queen has to come to e6 and then look at this that i found on the computer queen e3 right my move you know i'm taking credit for that because i played it yesterday uh, playing this idea on this so the knight is pinned to uh, to d4 there's no point there's no time for this move because of uh, queen coming to a7 so after this move this is a potential idea you know trying to trap the bishop and will my opponent find this? Uh, I don't know, but it looks like a good option. Uh, just normal development, rook g8 is coming up as a quick computer move, bishop h4, things like that. But if my opponent does play this, or even if not, my idea is going to be knight a4. Right, knight a4, what's going to happen after knight a4? Well, let's say g5, continuing the plan. We have this move, stunning move. Bishop takes, sacrificing the bishop. And we you know that cannot be taken uh, naturally because of the the folk. I'll put that on the board so we just whack. It can't be taken, so king side steps, and then what do we do? We're still trapped, and this is threatening to take the bishop, which is obviously hitting the queen. So what do we do then? Right, bang. Look at this move, right? Knight coming to c6, check. And the computer best move here uh, is ludicrous. The computer best move is queen sacrificing itself against this move right what this is a computer best move and then this and then this right and we go into this line right but i'm i just cannot see a human being just sacking the queen in that position so but if they don't then they've virtually lost you know which is what i'm hoping for tomorrow right so after this move I mean, this just looks more natural, yeah. But then uh, this just comes in as a probably as a shock. Bang, you know, sacking the bishop because after that move we have the queen coming in, and this just looks, you know, horrific for Black. It's just going to be game over pretty soon, right? Uh, you know, this can't be done because of this move, winning the queen. So we, the king has to come like even further to the centre of the board, and yeah, okay. You just bring this rook across, and then this rook across. You can sack the rook. You can sack the exchange. You can play. A we'll take the knight first, and then we can we can just do anything really. Things like this as a sample line, you know. But uh, I suppose you could also, in this position, just bring the rook across straight away. You know, get rid of this first. Well, I'm going to study this line in more detail so I know what the hell I'm doing. So hopefully, you know, this is what I've done. I played a game. Yeah, I was all right at the opening, but the queen e1 idea was uh, not good. But the queen d3 is a better idea. And then I'm going to study these lines. Uh, and then I'm going to play somebody else. Or I'm going to study this. Or I'm going to play the guy and end up with the black pieces. But that's what it goes. So, all right, disappointment. You know, three really poor games. But I'm picking myself up and I'm going again tomorrow. Back with better news uh, next time I do a video. So thanks for watching and following uh, this story and this uh, my vlog of this chess, you know, torture that it is. And uh, take care. Goodbye.